The most dangerous phrase in the English language is, that's why we've always done it. And it's dangerous because it implies a resistance to change. And right now in business, change and keeping up with it is more important than ever. I've certainly seen more change in the last two years than the last 15 that's preceded it. And I think that's because of two reasons, really. First of all, we've got technological advancement, so with the rise of AI. And we've got changing customer demands, so we've got millennials and Generation Z that are expecting more here and now. Now, think about a very traditional industry. What I'm going to talk about would be banking. And the banking industry, traditionally, on your high street, it's quite a painful process to set up a new account or get some funding. It can take days, if not weeks, paper-based forms, going backwards and forwards. I don't think anyone ever calls that a fun experience. Then think of the new challenger banks, people like Monzo here. So I set this Monzo account up a few weeks ago, took no more than 30 minutes. It was all done on my phone, anti-money laundering, click of your picture, it was all checked and verified and I had access to funds within minutes there. And then you think about people like iWaka for business funding, decisions are made in hours, not days. So it's really, really streamlined and changing the way that banking's worked. And it's a good demonstration of how technology and customer demands come in together to shake up quite a traditional industry. So nowadays, my expectations of my bank aren't actually set by banks. They're set by people like Amazon and Netflix that give me access to anything, to buy anything, to do anything, when I want, where I want it. So why wouldn't it be the same in my bank? And it's that approach that they're now needing to take. Now I often hear, well, I run a big business, it's too big to change, we've been running legacy systems forever, we've had people here 30 years that have done things the same way all that time. And I would say again, bringing it back to banking, look at people like Barclays, Barclays Digital Eagles that have set up, anyone's been in there, that is so different to a traditional bank. It's more like a coffee shop, very approachable, the service there is very different, it's about um, constant uh, touch points across the year, and they're adding value through technological advancements and running free events and advice. So you're getting much more value, much more content for your money. Um, and it's really shaking up the way that banking is done. So I would say no, no firm ultimately is too big to make that change. Now I've handled over 500 cloud accounting conversions, as well as helped 40 other accounting practices move through this digital journey of change. So, my general approach to managing change is to break it into five key steps. Number one, define the vision. You need to understand why you're making the change, and more importantly, so do your staff. If you don't get buy-in, it will simply never happen. Number two, have clear KPIs. If you can't measure it, you simply can't monitor it. Number three, design new business processes. Do not lay a new technology onto old ways of working. Number four, training and development absolutely key to get continued buy-in. And number five, continually refine the process. It's not about having an update once every year or once, any two, or once every two years anymore. It's about continually refining processes. I'll go into more detail in future videos about those five steps, but for now, I'd really love to hear your opinions on change management and what's worked and what's not worked for you.